On this episode of Function Beast, we're doing our best impression of Bane. Hi, folks. <laughs> um, so basically, Jesse's motor's in here. Um, you know, you saw in episode whatever number, whatever it went in, um, that we uh, threw this bad Johnny in. And basically, the motor mounts and stuff aren't tight at all right now, so it can move around a little bit. Um, even though theoretically, once I get this trans, uh, once I get this trans jacked under it. We could tighten it because then I'll have it at the right measurement. So basically what you're looking for in the chassis is to make sure this way, side to side like this, the engine is zero. And for this, you want it to have a lean back of like three, three and a half degrees. Um, and you know, right now we've jacked around and pushed it up enough that the motor is pretty zeroed in there. Um, you know, it's, it's zeroed as much as the chassis is. It's on a lift, so it's never zero. That's just the way it is. Um, and then this way, it's at like, it's like two degrees. So we want to get one more degree out of it, you know? And uh, yeah, the way to do that basically is to uh, drop this down. Right now it's just being held out, held up by a screwdriver inside, just jamming it against the body. Um, <clears throat> so I'll get this on here, pull the screwdriver out, and then I'll lower it and just keep measuring. There's a couple things you want to just keep in mind when you're doing that is you don't want to lower it so much that these CDs are relatively big. If you look at it from the side, you'll see that even high up, this sort of sticks out uh, underneath the frame rails. Like this will be a low point in the car. Um, that's just because that spot of a CD transmission is huge. Um, you got to make sure you don't lower it so much that the oil pan makes contact with the steering rack. Uh, things like that. So it's a, it's a balance between pinion angle and clearance. It's a swap in a car, so you gotta make a balance. You know, it's not it's it's not gonna be like a factory car was. So, so we're it's gonna be it's gonna be better than the factory car was. <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> I thought the screwdriver would be loose enough to pull out, but apparently not. Like just yank it out, you know, easily. With hands. Pliers? Um, maybe, I mean. What I think I'm gonna have to do is actually crawl into the car and pull it out. Just, uh. This, by the way, 100% not OSHA approved. This uh, screwdriver is even touching the chassis. It's the shifter. <laughs> oh, at work, I'll like be building something or whatever, and I'll literally be standing on this with my shield down welding like, all the time. <laughs> See, right now we're at like a little more than three and a half right there. Easier to come up on it than to go down on yeah, it. I can't con control the lowering really. Yeah, that's good. If this was a like steel oil pan, you just stick the magnet to it and then, you know. What I'm doing too, because this has a bunch of writing on the bottom, is that's why I'm going so far to the outside here because I'm avoiding all that writing. Um, if, uh, if the intake manifold and like the injectors and all that shit wasn't in already, I would just do it on the valley cover because that's like, yeah. uh, like the flattest part of the motor. Makes sense. 
but you know the bottom of the oil pan will be flat. All right, so this is the height that we're going with, and uh, yeah, now I gotta make up some uh, some stuff. Gotta do some fabination. <laughs> the mount is taking shape. There is, if you can see from this side, how much this chassis, uh, how much I did the whooping on it, yep. as as these uh, should be vertical, but aren't. We've decided since it doesn't touch anything, that it's probably fine. Probably fine. Yeah, all the time people are like, oh, what kind of tools do you need to do an LS swap? You need one hammer and one larger hammer. Whatever size hammer you have, you need one bigger. If you can use an angle grinder as a hammer, that's a twofer. <laughs> The thing has been made, there has been much cutting and welding. Much cutting, much welding. It is not easy to get on, I won't lie. Hama. And for anyone who's worried about it, this is the test fit, not the final fit. So we can even grind it out a little bit to make this process a, a hair easier later. <laughs> Whatever. It's it's an easy fit now. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> Accidental but nice coincidence here is every bolt on the trans mount is now a 17. It's taking it in, but it feels terrible, I'm not gonna lie. That's what she said. I'm gonna permanently install trans mount in the car. It's painted gold. You may be sensing a theme. Evan is murdering a Firebird exhaust back here. I said you're murdering a Firebird exhaust. Yeah, I'm trying to get this Y pipe out of it, which I've successfully done. I still gotta cut this gigantic fucking mount or whatever off of it. So I highly doubt we're gonna be able to reuse this thing. But Unlikely. This came, you know, you, you have to work with what you've got out here in the bush. Uh, when you're not trying to spend any money on your car. So this is from a Camaro that, or Firebird, Firebird that uh, yeah, I've been bought in 2009. Yeah, something like uh... <laughs> This This was the donor car for the original LS that was in the FC. <laughs> yeah, it was from the first LS swap I ever did. It's really years ago now. We have to take the header out again because it touches the chassis. So we have to whoop the chassis into the appropriate shape. Uh, when you ask what tools you need for an LS swap, the answer is resoundingly a hammer and a bigger hammer and one 13 millimeter socket. Seems it's not moving at all. What that sound? <laughs> All right, that didn't work, so now this is happening. I think that's enough? These were expensive and this hurts my soul. Okay, so I'm here at the shop. Uh, I arrived before Jesse or Galen have, so I'm all alone. Um, I did finish mocking up Jesse's exhaust last night, and now I'm going to finish weld it. So I'll give you a little bit of a look at the exhaust. All right, so here we see the uh, ISR headers right there at next down to two and a half inch into flex sections, then to a uh, two and a half inch pair of pipes that go into a Y section that then goes to a three and a half inch 
uh, HKS exhaust. I think that's uh, the primary muffler and then there's a secondary muffler down here. And uh, that's the whole system. All right, so I welded some of it on the actual car and um, now I brought it down, put it on some jack stands and I will weld out the rest of it here on the floor. Uh, I like doing it on jack stands like this. It's a pretty easy way. It gets it in like a nice comfort zone. Um, so it should take a few minutes and then the exhaust will be done. I have some terrible truth to show you. Uh, what we have discovered digging around under the car while Evan is making that bracket is that this car had a one inch difference in ride height from side to side is something that we discovered. And we found out the horrible truth, the, 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 the inconvenient truth for sure, uh, is that if you see those impact marks on the chassis, those are where subframe bushings are, are done. Uh, and these are factory, like OG, yeah. made in 1992. So that's impact marks all around. I have, I think that's enough. So right, right up there, that those smudges on the chassis, that means uh, that we have to do the most terrible job that you can do to one of these, which is drop the subframe, burn, the uh, factory subframe bushings out of the car uh, and then freeze some solid ones in the freezer for overnight or two days or whatever. And uh, that's, it's terrible. Um, it's like the worst job ever. You have to take the entire rear subframe down and I don't want to do it, but now I have to do it. Um, and I ordered some PBM gold subframe bushings, which will arrive in some number of days and then get put in the freezer. Now the most important thing about doing the solid subframe bushings on your car, if you're ever doing this at home, is that you freeze them before you attempt to put them in the car. They have to be frozen for approximately 24 hours or you will have a bad time. So, going right here. It's going in the Function Motorsports mini fridge uh, where they will remain for 24 to 48 hours to achieve Rocky Mountain cold brood fits in your subframe excellence. Seven days remaining, subframes out of the car. This is, this is the way you do it. This is 100% the professional method. This is what you want to be doing a week before the event is taking the subframe out. Now we're gonna take it outside and set it on fire. There are several different techniques that you can use to remove subframe bushings. We've gone for trial by fire. Woo! Remember to always wear safety equipment. <laughs> Lifting the front of the subframe off the ground allows the fire to create a vortex, which burns the bushing out faster. This will film because it is actually interesting. Oh, it's so it's so cold. <laughs> it's been in the freezer for two weeks at this point. Ah! 
take your hands away. Good hammering. Four more of those. Three more of those. Yep, that's in. Hooray! It's done. Now it needs to go back into the car. And mm, yeah, now you know. G.I. Joe. What we're doing is making a handbrake bracket because we're going to go for a, a hydro handbrake this year. Um, the factory handbrake, some work good for some guys. It didn't for me. The deal is, you know, the cables are old and sometimes they get stretched out, and no matter how much you tighten them, still doesn't work so uh, I'm going for an inline hydro uh, and the car is kind of the least invasive I didn't really want to be spending money on a um, dual caliper setup so this seems to work it's the one that we put in the um, 350z we went for I bought a powered by max unit it works well so in order to mount it up in the car we need to clear off a space um, on the trans tunnel for a, uh, a bracket we're just going to be using a simple piece of angle iron um, what we're going to do is weld it into the chassis of the car, drill holes in the um, in the handbrake chassis, the body of it, so that it can be you know removable. We'll thread cert this, uh, and then we'll have a handbrake bracket. So if you come into the back here, what we're doing is some CAD for the handbrake. That's cardboard aided drafting for those playing the home game. Uh, the dirty finger method, which is the best method for uh, making templates. Fucking up on this thing. I can't like hold it straight. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay, so it's the best method for making templates on things that are large. Yeah, I want <laughs> Larger the, than a finger. There's, there's no, uh, yeah, there's no surface to actually run your finger on that stupid thing. So we need a piece of tape. Tape, which was thrown potentially anywhere. Oh, it could be anywhere. I launched it with uh, extreme attachment. <laughs> I go with the pack tape, I suppose. It's still interesting. Man. Nah. Always wear eye protection. Or, you know, don't. Down. That's got some temperature in it. <laughs> also, remember to get sparks in your stack of zesty beverages. I drank them all already. <laughs> That's what I have for breakfast, 96 ounces of Red Bull. If anyone's wondering, this is called a third hand. It helps to secure things, but in this case, I'm actually using it to bring ground to the piece because I don't trust the, uh, the circuit to be completed through the anodizing. So that's why I'm bringing it up here and just touching the part that I know is already ground down. That's, that's the whole point of it right now. But normally it would hold things. What? It's still a little bit warm, but certainly easy enough to handle. <laughs> that was like the eighth take. <laughs> we got some, we got some, some worlds in there. Ooh. And now we're gonna uh, grab the fly. Down. Now, I'm basically just going to clamp this thing somehow. 
or another. So, let's see what we got with wise and stuff. The total is about two inches where we uh, where we need it to be. So we'll go a little I'm bit pretty familiar with that size. <laughs> now the bracket can be cut to shape to better fit the transmission tunnel. This is for those for those uh, at home. This is what it looks like um, to be. Um, oh no! I've ruined it. What's Daredevil's name? Matt Murdock. Matt Murdock. This is what it looks like. This is how Matt Murdock sees a world on fire. I don't think he sees. <laughs> so, it's his superpower, Evan. <laughs> I think the one power he doesn't have is seeing shit. That's his. It's a world on fire. I've seen this show. <laughs> it sucks that they canceled all those Marvel Netflix shows. They're all gonna be on that Disney One or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. But you know they're gonna be on the they're gonna be on the Disney Channel. They're not gonna have a lot of Punisher stabbing people with chair legs and stuff on the old Disney Channel. You know? <laughs> yeah. So that's what made Netflix great, really, is it kind of followed that Sopranos style thing where everything could be more edgy, because that was like yeah. HBO shows. Bad, bad start. For, for those playing the home game, for, for those of you who are not that old, the Sopranos changed television. Yeah. Like, it, it literally, like, it, it was not the same after the Sopranos. Like, Game of Thrones is a thing because The Sopranos happened in the 90s. Before that, they thought every show needed to be, like, Family Matters. Um, like, oh, people are going to get, you know, emotional if it's, you know, they'll get offended if it's not just wholesome 24-7. And then Sopranos was like, fuck this guy, I'll kill him. And people were like, oh. Like, yeah, like, the first time Tony Soprano beat someone to death with a baseball bat, we're like, that's a game changer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But like really though, like it, it was a, a whole thing. Okay, I, honestly, like, and I mean, I'm not saying like I saw it coming either or something like that. It was just like, I mean, came out when I think I was like high school or something. I don't remember. Um, and, and you're older than me, so. I'm, I'm like ancient, so it was like a while ago now. But yeah, that's everything that's like. House of Cards, Game of Thrones, all that stuff is built on like a Sopranos template, really. It was like that in Oz. Remember Oz, the yeah. prison show? Yep. Those were the two that were like, oh wow, edgy. So we're putting thread certs in right now. We're gonna see if this works. It, it should work through the eighth inch. If it doesn't, then uh, yeah, I'll just have to weld nuts to the back. <laughs> That's a spicy meatball. <laughs> I just did realize a problem in our plan here. The thread starts do stick up out of it. So the thing is going to be hovering regardless. Yeah, whatever. We're going to start it! Oh my gosh! That's not a good way to start it, yeah. <laughs> Is the garage door open? And this went on for hours. We tested everything we can think of. Cam sensor, crank sensor, various electrical issues, but the car would not fire. We gave it the business. It did not work. I haven't eaten in a day. I'm sad. <laughs> Wait, you didn't think we'd just give up, did you?